Merry meet and welcome everyone. This is Serona Rose and this is a recap of the Astro Tarot show that aired on January the 9th, 2020 at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on thecauldron.net. Please check your time zone for what is appropriate for you. On this show, what I do is an astrology reading as well as a divination reading and I just combine the two as above, so below. Now, if you are not connected to my social media platforms, I will list them below in the discussion box. Please do so as I have not yet made a video of the astrological portion of this show. Um, but I am making this video because uh, this is going to give us a reading and still what's happening, the energy of all of this, um, you know, bringing that, those cosmos down to earth. You can also listen to me this Thursday night, uh, January the uh, 17th at 9 p.m. Eastern, and that will be my next show, and we'll talk about what's going on from there. Now, just a reminder, these readings are general readings. They may not be for you personally, or they may be, but this is a general reading, and I do feel like everyone will get something out of these readings. Now, if you would like a more personal reading, or if you would like a reading of what each month, like a little um, yearly reading about what each month will offer you, you can email me at astrotarotreport at gmail.com. Now, the ohm reading for this week, as I'm spread out here, is the strife, or the black thorn, as it is called. It represents the dark half of the year. Its totems are the grim reaper, the scapegoat, Vulture, its deities are Pluto, Seth of Egypt, Hades, and the crone aspects of the goddess, such as Nekbet and the German mother Holy, or Holly. The letter is Z, S, 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 T, and it is a part of the eight chieftain trees on the Alm tract. It is celebrated at the fall equinox. Now, this is known as a time of strife, and it's said to be an increaser of secrets. It is also called the slow tree, S-L-O-E, because of the fruit that it bears. It's also referred to as the fairy tree, or the dark mother of the woods. In 1889, T.F. Thistleson Dyer wrote The Folklore of Plants, and he stated that an eldrin stake and a blackthorn ether will make a hedge to last forever. So this is basically stating that this is a wonderful hedge bush to plant for privacy. He also stated that when the slow tree is white as a sheet, sow your barley, whether it be dry or wet. So it also refers to a harvest time as well. Now there is evidence that blackthorn was used by early man um, as they have excavated some remains of the Iron Age communities. And the Iron Age communities was about 3,400 years ago. They did find um, remains of this blackthorn in those communities. Now many birds will nest in these um, bushes because they're very, very protective. They're very thick. Um, they also um, provide food for caterpillars and butterflies and, and different moth species. Some of the birds that really like this bush are the nightingale, which is now a scarce bird, I hear, as well as the song thrush. Now, the, the berries of this bush can be used to make a liquor called slow gin, S-L-O-E gin. And that is made of the berries from this bush. And it's steeped in the gin with added sugar. It is a popular drink to drink in the dark time, the evenings. It's, it's good for pleasure, but it's also good for our pancreas as well as some of those um, those ailments that we may, um, may experience during the winter time. Now this alm in particular tells us uh, to set up boundaries, to protect ourselves. that outside influences might be a 
affecting us, so to be mindful of that. It's a good time to rid ourselves of things that cause us harm. Maybe a detox for the body is called for. Um, it represents as within, so without. So this tile urges us to look within, look to your mind, body, and soul, what is holding you back, what is draining your life. It also urges us to be patient and kind with ourselves, and to do what we need to do to make our lives happier, healthier, more stable and secure. So this is a wonderful om to have for this uh, time of the year and everything that's going on astrologically because there is a lot, a lot of uh, rough energy up there in our cosmos. Again, if you haven't checked out uh, my astrology portions, the recap that I have done, I will be posting those links below in the description box. Now, I want to add there the card you saw me use, um, this one right here, I'll put this back out here, um, this one right here. This is a part of the Celtic Tree Oracle and it's by um, Sherilyn Hidalgo, there you go, and that's the cover. I like this deck, um, others may not, but I do. I like the energy of it, it flows very well. Now, the rune of the week, and I'll be putting this right here so you can see that better. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can get a better look at that rune. There you go. This set I made about, mm, about 20 years ago, so it is a little bit worn. Uh, now, the rune set that I use are called the Norse runes, or another name for them are called the Viking runes. Um, I've had questions um, of others asking me which set that I use. That is the set that I use, the Norse, or they're also called the Vikings rune set. So, um, I do apologize for not uh, stating that in the beginning of my other readings, because there are other decks out, or other sets, I should say, out there, but that is the one I use. So, I will go on. This is the rune Othila, and this is about separation, retreat, and inheritance. Um, here in this reading, I feel this is more about shedding the old so we can make room for the new. Uh, many of us want to hold on to things that no longer serve us, um, things that actually block us from going forward in our lives. This could be anything really, friendships, relationships, jobs, even where you live, maybe you know, where you're living at is not a great environment for you. Maybe it's, um, you know, the jobs aren't good there or whatever, well, for whatever reason. Maybe it's time for you to leave, um, leave that spot. Maybe it's time for you to start looking for another job. Are you in a dead end job? Are you in a job that once worked for you that seeming now it's not working for you? It's not, um, it, it's actually draining you. Um, friendships and relationships. This is a big one because many of us don't like to hurt people that we care about. And, you know, we have to understand that it is okay to love people from afar. Um, sometimes, you know, being in those relationships are just a little bit too toxic for us to handle uh, for so many different reasons. You don't have to cut people off completely. Just, you know, taking yourself out of that equation can be good enough. So that could go into the moving aspect as well. If you can see on this rune, you'll see how the two pieces are working together and they are coming to a crossroads and then they're splitting. So this is, again, separation. Um, it can go into um, surrendering one thing to gain another. It's about, you know, stepping back too, because this is, uh, this rune represents a retreat. So stepping back from things that um, aren't working for, for us anymore, uh, those things that we're just not feeling anymore. Um, <clears throat> it could be, you know, whatever's going on in your life. This is an individual thing for each and every one of us. So it's just about getting rid of those things that, you know, just no longer working in our lives and cutting away um, the dead uh, so we can, we can bloom and, and we can um, go forward in our journey. 
Now, you know, you could also um, hear this, this is not, you know, cutting things out is not always um, an easy thing to do. It's not always easy to say goodbye. It's not always easy to move. It's not always easy to uh, cut out some of those things that no longer serve us. Um, so that's why it's associated with surrender, because we have to surrender, um, sur surrender our attachment to those things. You know, a lot of us could simply have, you know, just need to declutter, declutter our lives. We have clothes in our closets that we no longer wear. Um, you know, we have things that are just lying around our house that we no longer need, that no longer are really of any use to us and it's saying that we need to you know get rid of those those are building up stagnant energy you know you're looking at um, the energy of you uh, the energy of your environment as well and we want to keep that fluid we want to keep that moving so as we are getting rid of that it's making room for something that we do need that can be of value um, and that's really big for us especially you know in this time now a lot of people are uh, downsizing so this goes very well into our astrology reading especially with these alignments that we've been having this is a wonderful wonderful rune to have at this time um, I really feel good about that so now I'm going to go on to our to our tarot reading and the first card that uh, we got it doesn't surprise me at all at all was the three of wands. And I may have to zoom out a little bit for that. Let me zoom out and straighten that card up a little bit for you. There we go. Sorry about the movement there. Now the three of wands there. You can, sh you can see very clearly this man is standing on a cliff, on a very high cliff. He's got two blooming Hawthorne wands behind him, representing those things that he has accomplished. And he's holding one in his left hand, and he's looking out over this harbor into this beautiful calm water, the silvery blue water there. There is a ship there, and you can see he is seeing beyond the horizon. The sky is clear. Uh, this this card is, uh, you know, to me, it's about waiting for your ships to come, waiting for your ship to come in. Um, it's about, um, it, you know, it's about broadening your horizon, so to speak. And wands represent, you know, they represent our fire element. Uh, so this is about passion. This is about, um, you know, it, it's about action. Um, this card represents many chances that are available to us, those things that broaden our horizon. Um, maybe you're going to be introduced to something that, you know, um, that you want to study. Maybe some travel may be coming up for you, some a business, um, a business opportunity. Um, it, it's a time of of broadening your horizon. So think about that. Just think about broadening your horizon. And it's being aware of the opportunities that exist for you at the present time. It's urging us to take advantage of the potential, to stay committed to our path and, and to go out of our comfort zones, to uh, you know get out of our ruts and stretch ourselves a little bit. Um, you know, this is a very, uh, a, a very, optimistic card and it encourages us to step out of our current environment step out of our comfort zone and to think big to dream big and you know it's one about development um, the growing expansion and it's about self exploration so you know we're waiting for things to unfold and and this is about you know um working on, you know, making, um, bringing those dreams, bringing those desires into the physical. So, you know, some of you could be preparing to start a new job, a new career. Maybe you're getting a promotion that will give you more responsibility. Uh, maybe you're waiting to move. Um, it's about future, f the future and change. And that's our only constant, isn't it? Isn't it? Change. 
everything is always in constant motion. Even out here in the swamps where I live, everybody's like, oh, the swamps are stagnant. Nope, there's so much going on beyond the surface that you just couldn't even imagine. This card says the future is bright to keep on focusing on your goals. It's very optimistic energy. Now the number three is on this card and it holds the energy of creation and creativity, inspiration, and it truly shows that mind, body, and soul interconnectedness. This number is about great optimism. It shows expansive growth. It represents ideas become manifest. Uh, communication is very heightened with this number. And this number wants those deep connections. It wants those soulful connections. Now, interestingly, the Pythagoreans believe that the number three was the first real number. And, you know, that's kind of amazing considering, you know, we think of number one. But they believe that number three is. Excuse me. Now, in the tarot, the number three uh, represents the Empress card. And the Empress card in the Major Arcana is about abundance and maybe to ex excess. You know, we have to make sure, you know, uh, not to go to our extremes. And this is about a strong inner voice. She represents creation and growth, and she warns against inaction. So here... We are working on our goals. We are actively working on our goals. At the same time, we are waiting for things to become physical, to manifest in our physical environment. So I will add here that you really need to focus because here, um, this is a lot of creative energy. And the number three, you know, it likes to expand. This, this, not, this card itself is about expanding our horizons. So stay focused on your goals. Now, our next card, you know, is no surprising to me. And I'll get her right out here. Put that one there. Set her right here for you. The Queen of Wands. Look at all of that fire energy there. Now, the suit of wands itself, because we just got another wands here. So, I want to talk about the wand energy, the suit of wands here. This is associated with primal energy. Um, it's about spirituality, inspiration, determination, strength, intuition, creativity. Um, this is where our ambition is. It's about expansion. It's... Um, it's about our original thought. It's the seeds from which growth comes from. So it is associated with the element of fire. Now you think about fire. Fire's hot, right? It's wild and it's unpredictable. Uh, it's very energetic. Um, it helps us to, in our building tools. Now it can be destructive, but it offers us building tools and it, it's fire is symbolic of passion, energy, enthusiasm, and sexuality. It is a masculine element and it's about the drive and it's about the willpower. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So for this card, you can see that she is sitting there in her, um, her throne. It's actually a sunflower throne there. And, um, she is surrounded by flames. Uh, her gown is gold and she's got um, a golden crown as well. And it's encrusted with rubies. Um, she is um, holding a, a blooming hawthorn wand in her right hand. And it has red streamers tra trailing down from it. And uh, she's um, got a... Uh, bundle of sunflowers there that represent fame and represent acknowledgement in her lap there. Um, and again, she is surrounded by flames and, you know, she is definitely a powerful force. Um, she's wearing a necklace of rubies. Now, rubies themselves, they carry the energy of passion and nobility, of purity, love, um, spiritual wisdom, intuition, and it's about good fortune. Um, and she is bringing a punch of energy 
to this reading. So in our challenge placement, especially after the holidays, many of us was eating heavier foods. Um, we may be feeling sluggish and maybe just um, even the holidays itself puts a strain on us. We may be feeling overwhelmed. Maybe our get up and go is not there. Um, it's a time, you know, this card represents a time when things are happening, happening very, very quickly. And you may be having a time or an issue of tackling all that you need to get done. Now, the suit is associated with fire, but all queens re are, um, are represented by water. So this can uh, connect us to the water element, which is about our emotions. So, you know, for some of you, you could have the energy to do things, but you're having to wait for other factors to catch up with you. Like I said, this connects us to our emotions. So maybe we're having to leave something that we care for behind and it's causing a block in our energy. Uh, it could be that our emotions are all over the place. Um, you know, something that, you know, when we have to leave something that we're attached to, it can um, really have us deep within our emotions. Um, so, you know, but, you know, she tells us to not be afraid to own our real power and to put it out there in the world. And so for this being our challenge here, we could be, um, you know, having a little bit of problem with our self-confidence. Um, you know, maybe we're having to reestablish our sense of self. Maybe we're having to learn some self-respect. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, the Queen of Wands is a natural born intelligent leader. And this card is the mover and shaker. So again, in this challenge, we're being challenged with that. Um, there's things that are, uh, that are uh, presenting obstacles to us that are not allowing us to, to go forth. This connects us to the OM. Is, you know, maybe we need to build some healthy boundaries up. Um, to Othila, we need to cut away, which is no longer needed. You know, we are, um, she's urging us to, uh, to connect to ourselves deeper. Um, you know, to express ourselves more openly. And, um, and, you know, doing that allows us to connect with others on a deeper level as well. And this, she can also connect us to the shadow part of ourselves. So this being in a challenging um, position in our reading, that really touches on that as well. Maybe you are afraid to uh, look at your shadow and to address your shadow. So all in all, I think this is a wonderful card to have, but uh, I really feel that passion is here and she urges us to be passionate about what we are going after. And if we're not passionate about it, should we really be doing it? Now on to our next card, which, you know, this is our advice card and there's, <laughs> there's no, uh, no surprise here. So our advice is the two of pentacles. Now, if you can see that young boy there uh, juggling those pentacles there, um, he's got his eyes closed and uh, he looks like he knows what he's doing. He's good at his, uh, his, his craft there. He, um, you know, he's got everything under control, right? And you'll see that infinity sign that is wrapped around those two of pentacles as well. And uh, that, that, uh, it connects us to as above and so below. Now, if you look at the background, that water is blue. It's dark blue, but it's choppy. It's very choppy. It's uh, um, very hard to maneuver through. And you can tell that ship back there. He's doing it, though. He's going through those choppy, worth, uh, rush, uh, rough waters there as if they're nothing. Um, this always tells me when I look at it, I think of being the eye of the storm, being the calm, no matter what's going on around you, to be that, um, 
to be in your be grounded be centered be in your peace um, this is about having multiple priorities <clears throat> it connects us to time management um, it tells us to be flexible to be adaptable um, you know um, again to go with that flow right so with this card here um, you know it really connects us to the message of astrology and again I'm going to urge you to go read that um, because it really connects us to that astrology now the infinity sign I want to address that really quick the affinity sign um, is associated with the magician card and the strength card both of them are in the major arcana and they both represent power over the self now the boy has his eyes closed so he has power over what he is doing and you know it shows his strength of the self he is being the eye of the storm so no matter what is going on around him he is staying focused on what he's doing and he's making things work for him here we are urged to prioritize things this goes into time management as well manage your time if you have a lot of things on your plate um, you know you you're overwhelmed you have so many things to do but it's time to sit down maybe even make yourself a to-do list and prioritize what you need to do and to manage that time so you can be focused on what needs to be done and to be productive this is about keeping your head above water okay so you may need to you know catch up on your bills you know the holiday season can you know can hit our pocketbooks really hard so you know make sure you're managing your finances you may need to set a budget up for yourself so we need to work at having that balance within our lives we must learn at making it all work together our jobs our family playtime our spiritual lives there is a balance that we need to keep in order to have a healthy well-rounded life and sure we may not have complete balance in our life we may never reach that complete balance but we need to learn how to get as close to that as possible so um, you know um, the number two is on this card so that represents partnerships and coexistence the number two appears on the high priestess card of the major arcana and it represents light and dark the mind and body and it is associated with the water and the moon the number two represents the divine feminine and is a bringer of harmony it is sensitive and empathic so our advice is to maintain harmony within our life by balancing it out prioritize so that we can be productive remember as above so below in this energy of shedding and getting rid of bad habits and letting go of the old this helps one avoid the feelings of overwhelmment it's telling us to stop filling our plates so full and to find that happy medium a great card to have so I'm going to go on to our next card which is our outcome or our message from spirit there we have the nine of cups and in this card you will see the lady there she is sitting at a table see the cups there and the food that's there there's a cauldron behind her she's got a content look on her face and she's pouring her a glass of wine like a job well done she is satisfied she's happy it's the end of the day so cups uh, represent our emotions our dreams and intuition and in this card you'll see the eight silver cups on the banquet table and it's arranged in an arc shape in front of her and there's one directly in front of her and she's pouring her a glass of wine and she's looking at the cups with this pleasant look on her face there's pineapples apples grapes and pumpkins on this table as well and you know she is she's waiting it looks like she's waiting she's going to have a gathering as this is the card of hospitality gatherings and it's about success after reaching a desired a um, 
after reaching a desire that you had or reaching a goal. It's about accomplishments. Here in the outcome position, it shows us in a very content um, place. If we are following the path that the tarot has just laid out before us, um, it shows us in a happy place um, that we have succeeded. We've reached some goals. We have, um, we are finding our emotional self-satisfaction on our journey. So it is okay to, uh, to celebrate now. You've worked hard to reach your goals, to, treat, to achieve your dreams, and it is okay to celebrate you. When I was growing up, I was taught not to be a braggart, and this is quite different. This is talking about celebrating you and all of your accomplishments, big or small. It's about celebrating those goals and about celebrating those dreams that you've achieved. It's about celebrating um, leaving those bad habits behind, leaving those toxic relationships behind. It's about celebrating cutting all the dead out of your life so that you can live, you can expand, and you can thrive. Now the number nine on this card, this the number nine is about um, it's about an ending as well, as it marks the end of a nine-day cycle. So it's about finishing. You've reached the end of something. Um, it's, um, it's a number of gentle energy, and it's about shining our own light. The number nine in the tarot is the Hermit card, and this tells us to go within and to shine our own light, that through our experiences that we have gained, um, a lot of knowledge here and to use that knowledge. This is the, this number nine represents the path of the seeker that leads us to the greater mysteries. So yes, shine your light, celebrate you and your successes and be happy, be content at where you are. No matter how big or small what you've done, maybe you've quit smoking. Maybe you've started a healthy diet. Whatever that might be, celebrate it. Because just as the, um, the ohm there that, you know, was talking about a detox, it's talking about, you know, boundaries, healthy boundaries, right? So it could be a time that you are cleaning up your diet and eating right and, and making those healthier decisions for yourself, just healthier decisions in general. So when you've done that, that's a lot. You know, when you have been able to put a habit to put behind your own toxic behavior, your own things that you do bad that cause blockages within your life, those things that you do to self-sabotage yourself. Um, when you do leave those behind, it is a wonderful time to celebrate. And it's, it, is, it is okay to be proud of yourself and your accomplishments. Now, the underlying energy, and I was not able to um, talk about this on the radio show, last Thursday um, because I did run out of time, but I will cover it here. It is the Empress. Yes, we just spoke about this card in the uh, where we are with the Three of Wands. So you see this beautiful Empress sitting on this cushion golden thrawn. It has wheat and five petal roses carved into it. So it links her to the pentagram and to the ancient mother goddess Demeter or Isis. So, you know, this, this connects us to the, um, to fertility, uh, expansion. Um, and you see that, that, that green grass, that dr green dress that she's wearing, uh, connects us to nature as well. She's very pregnant here. She's got 12 stars that form a halo around her head that represent the 12 zodiacs. Um, at her left, leaning against her throne, is a copper heart-shaped shield that connects us to the planet Venus. And I'll bring that up a little bit so you can see that. This tells us that we need to protect that which that we love, um, to honor that. The rabbit at her feet represents fertility as well. She's sitting in the middle of nature. She's got a lush forest behind her, green grass, wheat, and wildflowers. This is a card of abundance. It's a card of prosperity. And she's telling us that the grounds are fertile. It's time to plant your seeds. 
Um, but you have to plant your seeds and you're going to have to tend that garden. It's all up to you how this goes. Now, I want to thank you so much for watching the video, and if you have any questions, you can always email me at astrotarotreport at gmail.com. I will post all of my links in the description box below me, and um, I want to ask you to like and subscribe so then you'll be notified every time a video comes out. Thank you so much for listening and watching. If you would like a in-person reading for me and you're in the Savannah, Georgia area, you can find me at the Mystic Mall. Again, I will post the link in the description box. Thank you again. Merry part until we marry neat again.